2023's Jack in Mind review and thoughts. So, I'm Mars up by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. This video will have some jokes, none at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long, I'm gonna do what I can to make it worth your time. Before I dive any further into it, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. It's an extremely important strike. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So I started this video with a review where I probably won't spoil anything. If I decide to, to do so, I will verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing in detail the ending. So, the movie is rated 18 plus, and that makes a lot of sense. There's some very disturbing elements in it. Um, bit of strong language, I don't really count anymore, but if I had to guess, there might be like a dozen F-words, for example. I might also swear in this video. It is not the most violent, like if you want a, a great feminist horror movie that's recent and, and Hulu, you know, uh, Clock is is much more the kind of thing you're looking for than than this. I think they made the right choice with not having a lot of violence. The, the story doesn't, the story and themes don't really call for a lot of violence, which again, unlike Clock. And the, oh right, right, and some people worry about, I, for those worried about that, it does also have a good bit of scenes of, of like people drinking alcohol. Now, um, that is, yes, that's it for the rating. So, the, yeah, I've watched this movie once, and I just got done watching it before hitting record on this video. And, yeah, so the, the, the plot. After Billy begins dating a mysterious woman named Alex, she suddenly becomes plagued by blackouts and strange visions. And yeah, so the the this was written by Allison Morgan, and I'm not really familiar with other like she did. Um, an episode, like a short version of this movie before this, much like the, the writer-director of, of Clock did for, for hers. I was not able to find on YouTube the, the short. You know, it's, it's called something like First Date, and it turns out there's a lot of people who like to name their YouTube videos First Date. None of them appeared to be... No, none of them was the right one. I could tell from looking at the the when it was uploaded and, and such but yeah um, I'd like to see more by her and she's also she's more well known as an actress she has 27 actress credits and only six writing credits and this is the only movie that she has written I hope she writes more other than this everything she's written is like shorts and such but this definitely, this is a very strong debut, feature debut. And, yeah, I don't think I'm really familiar with any of, no, no, I'm not familiar with any of her acting work either. I gotta stop being so wishy-washy when I know the truth. But she appeared on The Americans, uh, you know, so, yeah, she's she's been in at least some stuff that's really big, well-known stuff. I think she did a very good job. Like, there are a couple of... Yeah, I'm gonna go into the, the positives first. Everyone feels like a real human being in this. Um, no character feels like they're just, like... 
no, no major character feels like they're just there for plot purposes. There's one or two supporting characters that are there for plot purposes, and that's fine. That's not a problem. It's just you don't want a major character to just be there to just accomplish something in the script. You want to treat them like they're a real human being, and this absolutely does that. Everyone is very credible. Yes, some characters sometimes make frustrating decisions, but I would say they're always credible and usually also like realistic to the real world, not only this this particular piece of fiction. Um, yeah, so it is definitely a movie that I can see an argument for it not being feature length, or at least, you know, technically feature length is like anything over like, I want to say 45 minutes, but we don't really count that as feature length. you got to get higher up, and this is you know, when when the end credits roll, they don't so much roll as sort of, like, slowly, they're thinking about it, okay? They're getting to the part where they, where they roll. But they're not really moving very fast, and uh, this is a decent time to get into it. Yeah, there's, there's nine minutes of end credits, and there really didn't... It's, it's only because they, they move very slowly, and it's basically because even as it is, as, as you know, the movie can't quite reach feature length without doing what, what we consider feature length today without doing that. I don't completely agree that it should have been a short, but I do think that there are... I don't know if I would say that it should be shorter, but I can understand, me personally, I thought it was great, but I can understand why some others, you know, have said that they felt it was too long, and especially, like, the start is a little too slow. I don't, I don't completely agree, but I can see what they mean, and definitely it is the kind of thing, I, I don't... I don't know if it was always meant for Hulu, or if it was ever headed for theaters, because the thing with streaming is, there's so many other options, you know, even if you only have one streaming service, unless the one you have is really, really limited, like most streaming services have a lot that you could be watching, and so if the opening doesn't really grab you, and evidently for some people it didn't really you know, that can mean that they stop watching. So I think it might have been tactical, not necessary, but tactical if it started a little faster. Personally, I felt that they they did do a good job of immediately grabbing our attention. Now, yeah, so, the and it was directed by Kelly Kali. And she has, yeah, she she is directing something right now that's in post production called Kemba. This is, let's see, um, but yeah, she yeah she has seven completed credits, and yeah, this is not her feature debut. Um, she did one called I'm Fine, Thanks for Asking in 2021, and The Adventures of Thomasina Sawyer in 2018, which is, a, is it like a full gender swap, or certainly at least, um, Thomasina, that, that is a woman's name, I feel like, but I can't quite... I'm struggling to confirm. No, yeah, yeah. Thomasina is female. Um, so yeah, that's that's cool. It's a you know that story is classic. So I'm glad to see that it's being, it's still being done, and and they're adding like twists to it. Uh, you know, I I first watched a, an adaptation of that story when I was a kid. You know, so yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nothing that I'm really familiar with 
but I'm glad she's continuing to direct, and I'd like to watch more of her work. Um, she is also an actress. Some of what she's appeared in is... Yeah, she has a... She appears in this, and also in I'm Fine, Thanks for Asking. But the, the other three are not ones she directed... And she produced 12 things, including this and Fine Thanks for Asking. She does a really solid job. There are a lot of very smart choices here. A lot of scenes are very short, really getting to the, the point that they're, you know, that that's the one. Th I, I don't really agree that this movie is padded. I could see how it, like, it easily could have been. But scenes that could have been used as padding tend to be very short. Yes, honestly, if you think that there is a scene in this movie that simply serves no purpose at all, put it in the comments. I am happy to defend every scene of this movie. And, yeah, the... the I don't know if there's a lot I can say about it without giving way. I'll just say that there are yeah, there's this sequence where like the camera is is like let's see. I think let's see. First it like gets closer and then it pulls back out. And it doesn't do that with only one shot. It does that with like five or eight shots or something. And, like, the preparation, it must have been completely just, yeah, um, preparation, planning, it's, it must have been a, a huge undertaking, but it absolutely pays off. It's a very striking sequence. Now, let's see, and, and, yeah, um, this is a good time to talk briefly about so yeah the the cinematography by Rasa Partin. Uh, uh, let's see yeah thirty seven completed credits six upcoming. Not really anything I know, but yeah, um, incredible talent on display and and so many really really smart decisions. The editing was by Salvador Perez Garcia. And, uh, let's see, yeah, 34 completed credits. Nothing else I'm familiar with, but, you know, fantastic work here. The, the, The choices, you know, the fact that the scenes are short and get to the point very quickly, and yet, in part because of writing and also acting and directing, we, yeah, you know, each scene, we get a sense of the people, we get a sense of the situation very, very quickly, and then it moves on. You know, this is something, I, a, a lot of more recent horror movies will, like, get to the point very quickly, and then move on. Which, you know, as someone, like, I love older horror movies as well. You know, some of my favorite horror movies are from the 50s. I'm really glad that we are now at a point where, like, the, the what's it called? Uh, media literacy and the, the, also just, you know, the, the, the capabilities of with within like filmmaking, it would have been a nightmare to to try to edit something as moving as quickly as a lot of stuff does today. Way back then, you know, you know today like this was almost definitely edited on a computer with with software that you know, whereas back then they were doing it by hand, you know. But yeah, this is one of those movies that really takes advantage of the the leaps that have been made, uh, you know, technologically. And yeah, just really, really 
I think I've made, yes, I've said everything I wanted to about it. So the protagonist is in a sapphic relationship. I really love that we can now do horror movies about LGBTQIA plus people where them being part of that community is not at all what we're scared by. And it's also not treating the interracial coupling as inherently bad, though there is a definite power imbalance which it explores. And no, this is not a white people are bad movie. Now, the... the you know, like, uh, I guess it's a spoiler to say, tell you what, brief spoiler for Basic Instinct. That movie does not have a single female character who is seen to be romantic towards women who is not at all coded as, like, dangerous, especially dangerous to men. Not a one. You know, I guess maybe extras. But every single character, everyone we know the name of. Dangerous to men. No more spoilers for Basic Instinct. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily... That, that's ne that Basic Instinct is necessarily a bad movie. I'm just really glad that we've come so far. Now, let's see. So, yeah, I really appreciate that today's feminist horror movies, sadly examples would spoil those films, and thrillers are often about the partner of the female protagonist at first appearing to be good, or at the very least safe, and later it becomes clear to the protagonist and audience that they are dangerous, a threat to them. This is something that women have dealt with basically forever, like literally thousands of years. It's something we're finally openly talking about. You know, I think unless you can do something amazing, we probably have enough horror movies where a person goes to a place that the audience has been to a similar place, like Friday, the th your Friday's the 13th. And you know, for a very long time, horror movies were dominated by external threats, serial killers, monsters, and the like. And while those can be compelling, can explore issues, Halloween 1978 explores whether or not suburbia is really truly safe when suburbia was specifically created to escape black people who were at the time, and sadly still by many, considered falsely to be a threat to white people, but we're now getting these much more relatable and thus often scarier threats and evils in horror. You know, I'm, I think an argument could be made that the fact that so few, and I'm not saying none, um, you know, famously Rosemary's Baby, you know, though I do not particularly like praising Polanski considering what he's done, and the fact that he has not, you know, accepted responsibility and, and done the time, you know, that is also a movie where the protagonist is female and the threat, you know, there there is a, a sense that, you know, maybe she can't trust the people closest to her kind of thing. But for a very long time, that was very unusual to see movies like that. And I do think a case can be made that, you know, I'd like to think it was, like, passive, not, like, actually intentional. But the fact that these movies were not made, despite the fact that it's obviously, it's deeply compelling, you know, it's we're not talking about, like, a lecture or something. Some of these are the scariest horror movies ever made. But, yeah, for a very long time, men didn't really like the idea, and men, you know, the, yeah, Hollywood is run largely by men. You know, they didn't really like the idea that, you know, because, like, wait, if, wait, if a woman could be a threat of her partner, that might make some women not want to be with the man they're with. That might make them start to you know, ask for things that the man is un not, you know, incapable and or unwilling of delivering, and she might end the relationship. Now, let's see, the... I don't want to give away the opening of the movie, but I will say it does a really good job giving you an idea of what the movie is going to be like, like you, within a couple of minutes, you have a sense of what the movie is, is like. And 
I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending does fit what came before. I like the ending. I don't know if I completely love it. Um, there's an element of it that I'm not sure I completely love, but it's definitely, it, I'm more positive than negative towards it. And let's see. Um, yes, that brings us nicely to the characters. So Billy, our protagonist, played by Maisie Richardson Sellers, is basically, you know, she's struggling with, you know, she's had she has this not wonderful, but pleasurable relationship with her boss Christine and you know just it seems like Christine is not quite taking it as seriously not quite as interested in it being a relationship and yeah that's not you know Billy would rather there be a, a proper relationship uh, yeah, she she meets Alex, played by Shannon Woodward, who is very very charming, but yeah, as as I quoted earlier, mysterious. And I don't think I want to give too much more away. She is a character that you get to know over the course of of the movie. It's not just vague throughout, but I. Th think I would consider spoilers the, the yeah I forget if I mentioned Christine is played by Rosaline Elbay um, then we have Rose played by Shine Montpremier who has this you know she's she's an artist and incredibly talented and yeah Billy really you know really admires her art Kim, played by Kate Zakeli, is Billy's friend and really, really supports her. You see this from, from right away. Like, one of the first things you see in this movie is a conversation between the two where Billy kind of says, I don't know if I deserve better than what Christine is giving me. And Kim just immediately shuts it down you know, yeah, the exact quote is, cut that shit out right now. You know, we, we should all have friends as supportive as, as Kim is. And I think that is who I'm going to, yeah. But yeah, all of them do a really, really great job. Uh, Maisie as Billy is very, very easy to, like, you quit... <laughs> There's a lot of elements of the movie where there's one major element of the movie that is very, yeah, a very, very big part of the movie, and it can make it somewhat challenging to get a good grasp on things. So it's extremely important that Billy is very, very easy to understand and sympathize with and they do a fantastic job the, the writing and acting and, and direction phenomenal work on on that like you you really get a sense of who she is what she's trying to do what drives her you know you get you you learn some about like basically how she yeah, how she views the world how she views relationships and it's, yeah, they, they really do a, a fantastic job on it. Now, the, let's see, that brings us into, so yeah, the, the dialogue, there's a lot of, of lines that give you a, a sense of the situation and the people very quickly, which considering the some of the scenes are very short, 
extremely important and I suppose I already said that what I wanted to say was from there they're able to build you know there, there are it's difficult to talk about this movie without spoiling anything but I'm enjoying the challenge that I set for myself that absolutely nobody else demanded of me yeah the the they're able to to build and change things as as they go there is only one quote in the I'm to be quote section the opening lines and they do a good job setting the tone now that brings us to there we go and yeah because this is Hulu I am not seeing neither neither the budget nor earnings it's not called box office when it's streaming do streaming movies I guess they attract attention and views not necessarily not not money in the the way that yeah right and the yes the music is very very effective a lot of it is uh, um, original score made specifically for the movie okay I'm gonna go ahead and try I th I suppose his name is pronounced Yongnik Bontemp and yeah uh, he is very prolific he's done uh, he has a hundred and three credits as composer and one upcoming um yeah it's uh, I'm not super familiar with his work but he's done yeah he did a, a Transformers and right and a number of the credits he has are shorts but yeah uh, he does fantastic like he, the the music has a sense of location a, a sense of place and when the scenes are short music is extremely important in grounding and just phenomenal work um, yeah the the it's it, there there's a lot of it that's very tense and suspenseful very mysterious and there's also some use of uh, um, hold on I have it uh, licensed music and the choices are absolutely perfect um, there's there's this yeah there's a, one specific song that is played multiple times throughout and it's one of those very on the nose and it's those don't always work this is a case where it absolutely works but the you you know you you notice the lyrics and it's oh I see what you did there. Uh, there's some really great sound design, which, you know, some some of the things happen so quickly that the visuals, like they make an impression, but sometimes sound just really tells you what's like the the you know the 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 human ear and brain are very very sensitive to unpleasant sounds you know sometimes you'll hear something bad before you have a chance to see it and then you have to react so that's extremely imp that, that's a very useful thing to tap into for for horror films or video games and such and yeah they do a fantastic job here there are several very like strong noises very very crisp sound design and yeah so without end credits this movie is 78 minutes long with them it's 87 and I would definitely say it's it's worth that time and the 
I would maybe give it the first 35 minutes to, to make this make the decision of whether or not you're going to finish watching it try not to make up if if, uh, if you don't love the first 20 minutes if you think the concept might appeal to you try to give it at least a, you know those 15 minutes more um, you know you might still end up not wanting to watch but those first 20 minutes some some people might really not yeah might feel that it's it's taking too long to get going <clears throat> so the best elements of this are the so i decided i wasn't going to spoil yes the exact type of subgenre of horror that it is the exploration of these various issues uh, you know yeah i'll i'll briefly you know female relationships both you know romantic and and platonic race class and the some others that are perhaps spoilers and just yeah the the cinematic craft on display very very impressive and this is the part where I try to force myself to say at least one truly negative thing about it and I am not really coming up with anything um, yeah I, I don't really yeah um, and let's see So the thing I was most worried about was because of the kind of story that it is, which I'm still... I'll, I'll let you know at the very start of the spoiler sections. But I was a little worried that it would be too confusing, and that wasn't the, the case at all. Uh, let's see. And I was, yeah, I was looking forward to something that I'm not used to, and the movie absolutely lived up to my expectations there exceeded them in fact the trailer does give at least a little too much away um, it does also give you a pretty good idea of what the movie is like though it is also it's one of those trailers that kind of doesn't quite show the things that you're expecting to see I, I don't I don't love the trailer I think the movie is much much better than the trailer but it is also a movie that's very difficult to make a good trailer for that doesn't give a lot. That do yeah, that doesn't give away even more than it does. The cover and poster do not give too much away, and are actually the the is actually quite it's it's very very good it's a striking image that gives you a a an idea of what the movie is is like and on rotten tomatoes this has a 67 percent from critics uh, based on 15 reviews the an average score of 5.50 out of 10 10 fresh and 5 rotten and let's see i so yeah the the briefly from the rotten ones one says can't sustain our interest another says it's flawed Another says it's recycled. One says it's more intriguing on theoretical level than in practice. And one says the the explanation has issues. And I, I do think there's a case to be made there. 
Um, you know what? That is something. Yeah. Perhaps the the one thing I don't really love about it is the the explanation doesn't quite like I you know I know they had to do something, but it feels more like a concession than something that organically develops from the rest of it, which is too bad because it really is the only thing that doesn't just feel organic to it. Now, there are fewer than 50 user ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. It has a 56%, which, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's fairly low for them. The average rating was 3.7 out of 5. And on Metacritic, it still does not have... Yeah, that's right. Um, there are no user ratings at all. There's one critic review that's mixed. Let's see... Yeah, this doesn't really sound like a mixed, but the, um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's some other part of the review that's mixed. Anyway, um, this person gave it a 60 out of 100, and that is the only, which is too little for a, a score. There has to be at least four for Metacritic to give a score. Now, on IMDB, it has four user reviews, or three if you don't count the ones with spoilers. And uh, yeah, of, of those, two of them gave it a four, one gave it a five, one gave it a seven. And there are 17 links in the IMDB external reviews section. 16 of them work and are in English. And I will be linking to a couple of reviews in the description box that I thought were very compelling. I don't have a lot to say about the special effects. The... Um, they did the stuff practical that they could, and that really works well. It's not a super effects heavy film, which I know some people feel that horror movies should have a lot of, you know, yeah, violence and effects and effective violence done with special effects. And yeah, it, it doesn't really... It, it, that is one thing. I, it is more of a psychological, you know, psychological horror thriller than a, like, um, traditional horror. It, the, the, the stuff that's scary is more stuff that, like, it's, it's like man, emotional manipulation and situations not being what they appear to be and that kind of thing more than like threats of physical violence now right um for those who are either who either are looking for it or looking to avoid it it is definitely frank about uh, sapphic sex, it is not really trying to, you know, appeal to, to homophobes at all. It, it's, uh, but something I do appreciate, and this was one of my first notes, the sex is erotic, but does not feature male gaze. Something I, I quite appreciate. And some some there is a school of thought that says that sex in movies needs like uh, justification and I don't know if I completely agree with that I, I think it depends 
but I would definitely say that this movie does justify the the sex scenes, and I'll get into why in the description. Uh, spoiler section. It's wires crossed because I just copied some. I just copied into the description box the the links. Well, into the text block that I'm later going to make the description box anyway. Yes, um, I rate this eight psychological horror thrillers about the specific thing that it's about, which I'll get into very shortly, out of ten. And, you know, it's, it's too bad that this d doesn't have more attention uh, towards it. Right, and I just realized I did not talk about... On IMDb, it only has a 4.3 out of 10, with 16.8% giving it a 1, which, I gotta say, I it really seems to me like the homophobes discovered it. That's, yeah, I, I don't know how you how you rate it that low. 15.7 um, gave it 6, which I feel like is the lowest you can give it and be, like... I, I don't know how you rate this less than a, a 6, other than, like, agenda. Anyway, 15 point two, you know, homophobic agenda. 15.2% gave it 5, 14.7 gave it 2, 11.2 gave it 3, 6.7 gave it 2, 6.1 gave it 7, 7.9 7 gave it 10, which I... I wonder if maybe some of those votes are from people trying to to raise. It is entirely possible that trying to raise the average. It is entirely possible that forty nine people, seven point nine percent, did actually think it was a perfect ten out of ten. Um, honestly, if you're one of them, uh, let you know. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know. You know, I I. Like I said, for me, it's an 8 out of 10. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing um, what, you know, yeah, what made it a, a perfect 10 out of 10 for you. Now, 3% gave it 9, and 2.6 gave it 8. And there's only 624 votes total. I do think this movie deserves better. I think it's, you know, I can understand why the, the Rotten Tomato score is what it is. I... It feels to me like users have been giving it a uh, short shrift, and I I can't help but wonder if maybe uh, you know the the audience, because it definitely has an audience, hasn't quite discovered it yet, or maybe some of them were put off by those first twenty minutes. But I can imagine it is a movie that will get, you know. If, if people discover, maybe if in the future one of the, the people who helped make this so, so good, maybe if they make something that really makes a huge impression on people, people will go back and watch this and then, you know, appreciate it more. That takes us into the spoiler section. So, from here on out, everything I say spoils the movie, and we're going to start with notes taken while watching. So yeah, to immediately want to say, you know, this is a time loop psychological horror and I really love I think there's it's it's amazing to me that there are, that this isn't an entire like cuz like time loops if you're the if you're on the receiving end, if you're in control maybe less so. But if you're on the receiving end of of time loop stuff like I mean, how ridiculous is it that there's there's an entire subgenre called the slasher movie, which I love, devoted to the idea of someone stalking you and murdering you, but like time loop horror, which you know obviously doesn't ever happen in real life. Though the thing with stalking, it's I suppose I, I don't know if I wanna I I don't know I don't wanna sound I don't wanna risk sounding like I am downplaying 
Um, anyway, so what I will say is, you know, time loops usually in movies, it's like the the kind of you know the, there's some where it's about the the weight of responsibility like the first I sp okay the entire trilogy of butterfly effect movies you know and then there are ones where it's treated as this kind of cool you know you get a second chance kind of thing you know but the quick additional note here butterfly effect is not pu you know purely about time loops it's time travel but you are able to in, you know in those movies the protagonist is able to jump to the same point multiple times and thus you know creating a time loop you know able to have several go arounds of the exact same situation you know and then you, of course, have more traditional time travel like the Terminator and Men in Black 3 and this, these kinds of things where it is this, you know, yeah, you can, you can change the world through, you know, what you do in, in the past kind of thing. And, yeah, you know, for all of these, you know, yeah, like time travel... Or time loops and horror. I don't know very many that have. You know, certainly there's some. There's a major horror element to the original Terminator, and some of that does come from the time travel. There's, uh, you know, so yeah. There, there's this. There's the third of the Butterfly Effect movies, which I still think is a pretty interesting choice. I, I respect that they, you know, the second movie is just the first movie over again. The third one, they were determined to not just make the same movie again a third time. And I really appreciate that. It's not my favorite movie, but I respect the choice for sure. But yeah, these are pretty much the only three movies I know that have like time manipulation and are horror. And I just feel like there's so much you can do. Like, a lot of my favorite, like... Can I... I'll just say, some of my favorite non-movie time travel stories, you know, other mediums, if not outright horror, have horror elements. Like, there's this one... Let's see, I guess if I don't say the title or author... It's not a spoiler, but there's this one story where people, you know, travel through time trying to fix things, and they actually completely ruin everything. Like, they couldn't have... And, and it's very much this thing of, you know, yeah, things were not great, but you should have let Sleeping Dog lie, you know. Now everything is completely destroyed kind of thing, you know. And I feel like there's something really compelling there, and I just... Yeah, I'd like to see more like this. Anyway, to the specific notes. So, so yeah, I really appreciate, you know, Christine, and that's also, you know, the opening, the, the yeah, the opening line, which is the, the one IMDb quote. The first, yeah, the first lines is Christine saying, put your mouth on me, which, you know, love that confidence, love the, the you know, no, not feeling any shame over, you know, but, but yeah, you know, Billy wakes up alone and, you know, on the phone with Kim, she says something, you know, the, the equivalent of maybe I don't deserve to be treated well. And I, you know, I know I already said in the review, but I love that Kim says, cut that shit out right now. Just shuts it down because don't go there. That's not, nothing is gained from going there. And, yeah, so three and a half minutes in, we get the, the first shift, and I do quite appreciate the, the detail that it is initiated by, not, not caused by, but as soon as it starts, we hear the line, another, which is, yeah, 
quite appreciate that. And it's, of course, it's the server asking if she wants another drink. And, yeah, and, and you know, when, the, you know, that first date with Alex, you know, Alex's first attempt doesn't completely, like, it's not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, bowl her over. And I just realized I did not talk about, yeah. Um, hmm. Right. Yes, actually, I will just... Yeah, so, Alex's first attempt doesn't completely win Billy over, so she has to try again. Yeah, I have some, some quotes, so let's see. This is... Right, so some critic quotes. Randy Myers, writing for the Mercury News, gave the film a score of one and a half out of five, saying an underrealized screenplay fails all involved, particularly leads Mason Richards and Sellers. She, she gives it her all as Billy, a queer... Uh, sapphic woman with a rotten streak with women. She also blacks out, finds herself stuck in a Groundhog Day-like loop. Therein lies the plot problem. Jack and Mind repeats its scenes too often, making it feel like it originated as a short film that got stretched into a feature. I can understand where where Randy is coming from there. I don't completely agree. And let's see. Uh, yeah, another said, even without its paranormal events, Jack Mind is a powerful portrait of the disassociation that occurs when a person tries to justify the misbehavior of someone they love. Absolutely. That was the Los Angeles Times, no Murray. Now, let's see. Um, yeah, I th yeah, some of these quotes are... Um, hmm. Yeah, I on on second thought, I'm going to I'm going to do these quotes in the next section. So, back to Yeah, so, you know, the the very first attempt by Alex does not win over Billy. So, you know, can't help but take note of the the line this is about your personal safety. Now, obviously, you know, in the context of the scene, she's trying to, like, you know, it's like flirting. She's, she's like, trying to, you know, but the fact that she is also, you know, it's a, it's one of those things where, like, certainly in retrospect, that's a, a red flag that she, you know, and, and then she says, see you next time, which... You know, that's, that again, like, if you don't know that it's a time loop, then you just think, you know, oh, maybe she's, like, you know, trying to, to brush it off and not get, like, really upset about, you know, maybe she's, like, ah, what's the word? Maybe she's, like, joking, or maybe she's saying, you know, maybe maybe it's her way of saying Maybe we'll see each other again at some point, you know. And, yeah, you know, at the, um, what's it called? At the gallery, she and Christine talk about, you know, it's frustrating about the, you know, schmoozing British people, but we do it for the culture, which, uh, you know, quite good. Because it is that thing, you know, like... You know, eventually the British Empire gave up their colonies, but British people and Americans still hold a tremendous amount of the wealth of the world. So, in order for these art galleries to, to do well, they do have to schmooze with rich people. And... Let's yeah, and at the after party, Billy says no to Christine, but Christine does not accept it, which, you know, there's a, on, on a number of occasions in the film, Christine and Alex refuse to do what Billy says 
she wants or even needs. You know, it's very much a, a pattern of behavior, and that's, of course, something that the very ending of the movie tries to, you know, says that, you know, that won't happen again, kind of thing. And, yeah, we jump back to the bar, and, right, I, I didn't mention before, but, you know, Alex is very controlling from right away. And Rose knows something, you know, which is a great, like, you know, it's telling the audience, don't worry, an explanation is coming. This is not just going to keep happening over and over without any kind of, yeah. And, you know, yeah, they're, they're interrupted before she can, you know, yeah, Com yeah fix things, and, yeah, we learn, you know, Alex had a bad childhood, and this is why she became a perfectionist. You know, the thing about, you know, if she, what was it she said, if she didn't get straight A's, she didn't get dinner. If her room was, you know, wasn't spotless, they'd lock her in her room until it was spotless. And, yeah, suddenly, Christine does not show up at the the gallery, which, again, you know, right away, we're like, okay, that's, that's wrong. There's something very wrong here. You know, it, we, we pretty much figure out that has to be Alex. And now, Billy actually goes home with Alex, you know, with Christine out of the way, and another shot at the bar date, you know, the, the relationship proceeds much more quickly. I want to briefly talk about the fact that this is, like, I, I saw some people say that they didn't think it needed to be, like, they didn't think it was, there was really a reason for the, the sapphic, you know, I will admit I only know that you know I I my my knowledge is limited in in this but uh, you know I have heard multiple references from lesbians this is not like an out you know not people talking about lesbians but lesbians saying you know there is a ten you know a number of lesbians fall for each other too quickly and like move in with each other too soon kind of thing, you know, so the idea of uh, a lesbian being like this this abusive, you know, a gaslighting kind of, you know, which I, I'm not sure I've heard of specific, like, but I could imagine, I don't think anyone's immune to, to like, doing gaslighting. You know, it's not, it's not something inherently male or masculine. It's just, it, all it requires is a power imbalance, you know. And Alex is rich and white, and then you add in the, the supernatural element. So she is able to gaslight Billy. Now... And and that's the thing, you know, like, I wouldn't rule out that some people might watch this and be like, holy shit, I'm Billy and my partner's Alex, you know, and yeah, if, you know, if you are in an abusive relationship, do what you can to get out. It's, they're not going to change. No matter what you do, you can't fix them. And let's see, the... Yeah, we get a quick flash of, you know, Billy being stabbed. You know, the first chunk of the film is very thirsty. And this is in part because Alex is possessive. She wants Billy. Doesn't matter, you know, we, yeah, what Billy wants doesn't really matter to, to Alex. It should, but it doesn't. And the the 
uh, let's see, there's also um, Billy's sexual frustration. N not that she's not having sex, but she it's not leading to a meaningful relationship with Christine. And th that's the source of frustration. Right, and we get a flash of drowning and yeah and and billy is at the the doctors and alex is furious at the server the champagne much like alice is not chill and then we, yeah and this is when we see the 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 blood be drawn the yeah Alex draws some blood from Billy for the, the necklace, the ritual, and this, is, of course, explains the cuts. And this is the kind of thing where, you know, the metaphor, you know, the, the fact that it leaves these cuts, uh, you know, is, is, works well for this kind of thing of an abusive partner because, and this is, again, something, you know, for anyone watching this who is in an abusive relationship, the fact that they haven't physically assaulted you yet doesn't mean that they never will. If you, you know, if you are at all able to leave the relationship, that is the the best, you know. But but yeah, the there are a number of, you know, yeah, abusive relationships tend to escalate into physical violence, and that's the kind of thing that, you know, your friends might comment on, and you'll have to make up a story, you know, and, and she even says, you know, you know, it's just a scrape. So, you know, and, and she also, she says she doesn't remember, and in this case it's actually true, but, you know, some, some, I, I suppose, I, yeah, I, I don't know if, if partners of, if, if someone with an abusive partner would say they don't remember, they might just make up a, a story, but certainly the scrape th thing works as that and I did kind of feel like the first time we see let's see if I can get the name right Papa Just uh, Jimmy Jean-Louis the Haitian sensation that's sweeping the nation from heroes you know, the the very first time we see him, it did kind of feel like they were trying to make him seem scary, which is not wonderful. He's one of the, you know, kind of, kind of this idea of dark-skinned men being dangerous, you know, and I realize this is a movie that clearly has empathy for people of color, but the fact that, like, there are not that many with, like, outright dark skin I, I but I suppose maybe like an argument could be made that it is playing on that you know culturally imposed fear because ultimately he is the the solution not the source and yeah we see Alex really does not like Kim doesn't want to meet her and you know, leads to a fight, and then she rewinds time and, you know, says, I would, you know, I was just saying I'd like to meet Kim. And, yeah, Alex does not want kids because she has OCD about cleanliness and the, you know, yeah, she, she, The, you know, the kid runs up, and he's got chocolates on his hands because he's a kid, you know. And we see later that what actually happened was that, you know, he he got chocolate all over her, all over Alex's clothes, and she flipped out. But this time she makes it so that he falls, so that he can't get chocolate on her clothes so yeah that's yeah and Alex hurts the relationship of Kim and Billy by saying 
hurtful things to both of them one-on-one, -on -one, and claiming it was the other one who said it. And this is also, you know, something that a lot of abusive partners do, you know, isolating the, the yeah, the person they want to abuse. It's easier to abuse someone who is alone, who does not have a support system. And this is also something you see in a number of bullies will try to socially isolate their target. And, yeah, yet again the song plays only one lifetime. Very, yeah, nicely done. And, yeah, so 37 and a half minutes in, I was wondering if, you know, because, you know, we, yeah, the doctor again, and the, we get some more details. I was wondering if we knew too much, and, you know, really at that point, the only stuff that, like, we don't quite yet have confirmation that it's Alex doing it, and we don't know the explanation that comes, that comes later. But I think, yeah, I, I don't know if maybe it was a little too soon. Let's see. And, yeah, we get the, the really great um, bit between Billy and, and Alex where, you know, Billy expresses she doesn't want perfection. She wants reality. And I feel like this is a thing that, you know, POC know that real life is not perfect, and we white people, you know, it's something that I, myself, will, you know, we, we can really struggle to accept that perfection is unattainable in, in life, you know, a, you know, in part, pop culture has lied to us for a really long time, saying life can be perfect if the circumstances are right. You know, depending on what decade you watch pop culture from, you know, maybe what you need to be happy is the right partner. Maybe you need kids. Maybe you need the right ex the the exact right type of job. You know, the the you need to be with the per the your your one true love. You know, various things and. And, and yes, I did mean to separate, you know, some, some say you'll be happy as long as you're married. Some say you'll be happy if you're with your, your soulmate, kind of, you know. And as you come to realize once you've lived enough, you know, yeah, it's just not, that's not something that can, you know, can, can happen. And... I think, you know, let's see, so, so, Shannon Woodward, the actress, ah, uh, wow, it does not, I mean, I respect any woman who doesn't want people to know her exact age, um, let's see, maybe Wikipedia will have it, okay, she's 38, um, yeah, I, you know, the the actually yeah i think that puts her right on like the the cusp of completely coming to that realization that perfection is unattainable in life and she's she's it's the it's the death throes she is completely you know this is this is you know like i feel like it is probably around age 40 that you, you come to realize, you know, it's just not, no matter what, it will, you will never reach perfection. This does not mean that you can't be happy. You just need to learn, you know, not, not like settle, but, you know, yeah, if you, if you can't, if you're always thinking, you know, things could be perfect, you know, you're, you're never truly going to reach that, you know, but, yeah, so I feel like that's what's, so, yeah, the, the right age for that, and, let's see, 
Yeah, and you know the the. I, I especially really, really appreciated the, the line, you know, Billy at one point tells Alex, you know, I, you know, we should, so something like, we should fight, or I, you know, you don't fight me, or something like that. And, you know, Alex has this, like, there's this, um, what's the word, like, um, a, a dis disbelief kind of thing, you want us to fight, kind of thing, but she's, absolutely right that is uh, you know you you don't truly know someone until you fight them and yes yes i did just quote the matrix reloaded i don't really have a good excuse for that but yes i do occasionally that movie really does understand, you know, and have something to say about reality. But, yeah, you know, I, I really appreciated that. And it's this thing of, you know, Billy, as a person of color, you know, she's seen her share of interpersonal conflict. And, yeah, you know, that is how you learn, you know, it's, it's this thing of if she, you know, I'm not sure they ever really outright say. No, as, certainly Billy wasn't like rich. I, it's not completely clear if she was ever poor. I don't, un unless I'm forgetting something. But you know, and there's also there's other reasons. There's other you know, yeah, people get into arguments, and that's when you see. You know, it's not about finding someone that you never argue with. It's about finding someone that you can have an argument with without it destroying the relationship. And this is not only for, you know, romantic. It's also for platonic. And, yeah, and, you know, Kim and Billy have a fight, uh, you know, on account of, you know, we're seeing Alex's corrosive you know, yeah, she's really ruined the relationship. And, you know, when, yeah, when Kim says, maybe you just don't remember, like, oof, that really, and, and I really appreciate that, you know, f movies today are willing to call out bad treatment of minorities. You know, I, I've seen so many movies from the 70s and 80s where you'd have that kind of thing and the person you know the, the minority would just have to accept it and just move on and here it actually does significant damage to the relationship and Kim does apologize and her apology isn't enough you know you can't you can't say something like that that's yeah and yeah and we see the the email with Christine gone and yeah and you know Alex continues to push Billy to move in yeah and then we see the the you know what's it called like um I guess it's crap what are they called again it's um okay I'm drawing a complete blank anyway it says remember on it and yes I appreciate the irony of that and one one thing I uh, I don't love, you know, like um, Billy says, I don't need a nurse. They are kind of pathologizing dementia. I I don't love that. There's I don't know. If it can't do everything. It's it's not. It's, and and we see that Rose is dead and at first Alex refuses to tell the truth but eventually she does admit yeah you know they dated for a while and then she lets slip that she knows Rose slit her wrists which you know and and it's you know the, what did you just say which part 
you know, at the time she doesn't maybe completely realize, but yeah, you know, she just, she... One of the things she said was not something she should have said, kind of thing. And... Yeah, and, you know, even when Billy tells Alex, get the fuck out, and she's leaving, Alex still says, see you next time, which just, holy shit. And, yeah, and we see that Rose wrote about it and recorded a video with Billy and Papa Just, and, you know... We actually don't, like, the, the, we didn't even, she didn't even have, oh, wait, yeah, hold on. So she did completely forget the recording, but the recording is still intact on the thing. Yeah, I think this might be one of those things where if, where the, the time travel thing doesn't completely... Because wouldn't she remember if... Oh, wait, no, never mind, never mind. She doesn't remember because the experience, her memory of it is not in the, the box that is protected. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the... Yeah, and we get the detail that too many loops can kill you. And I honestly, like, I thought, oh, shit. This is not going to go well. This is, you know, it's going to be like at the end that, oh, that was one loop too many, I guess, or something. Love the long take where, like, you know, we see Billy, you know, with the on, on the floor with the thing. And, you know, she falls out of frame. And, like, then, then we... Yeah, they, I, they, she must have moved off camera, and then Alex and, and Billy, you know, like, walk to the door. That was really excellent. Just, yeah, fantastic. You know, the exact right choice. So, yeah, uh, 58 minutes in, we get the full explanation of what's going on. 60 minutes in, there's the plan for how to fix it all. It's the last 18 minutes is that and I think the the you know it's it's one of those things I can understand if some people thought that it took too long to get there and I do think that the movie would probably have been at least a little shorter if not for the you know I I hope that someday in the future we do come to like what's wrong with an with a movie that's one hour, for example, like that, I, I think it's too, I don't know if this movie would have been only one hour, but I could definitely see how it could be at least a little, a little shorter as a, but, but yeah, um, you know, th those last 18 minutes, once we have all the information, Billy has all the information, you know, I, yeah, that was deeply, deeply compelling. Not the only compelling part of the movie, of course, but, yeah, you know, and the, yeah, the, yeah, so the, the, they go to this place that's far away, the, this house, and, you know, Billy starts to take control and verbally push Alex the way that she has been pushing Billy, you know, which is, of course, you know, that's also how the movie ends, with her taking control of her life and her relationships. And, yeah, you know, accidentally, Billy fucks up the ritual, and Alex says, you did it again. You know, this is not the only time it's happened. And, you know, she says, we were meant to be, t or we are, you know, meant to be together. And, yeah, Billy says, you know, it's not real, none of it, and Alex won't accept that. And each time that it doesn't work, Alex ends up killing Bill. E. And, yeah, and Billy fights back and uses the crystal. And, 
Yeah, and we, you know, go back in time. Billy calls Kim. She broke up with Christine. And the, you know, yeah, just... And, and she shuts down Alex without even speaking directly to her at the bar. And, yeah, we, we see that the, you know, Billy is using the crystal. She did not give it to Papa Just. And Rose is brought back to life. You know, Christine is, is back. I think, was she also killed? I think that was what it was. And... The, the look between Rose and Billy made me wonder if Rose is aware that Billy has the crystal. Because she did say not to, although I suppose it's possible. Wait, did Papa Just speak? Did he understand English when spoken by others? He didn't seem to speak English himself. Maybe it was to hide it from him. Because there, certainly there doesn't seem to be any conflict between the two of them. But yeah, um, that was the entire... So, so yeah, um, I do really love... Something I love about the ending is the, this emphasis on taking back control. On fighting the, the abusive partner. It's not about, oh, she just needs to find the right person. It's about, no, she needs to love herself, put herself, you know, not, not like, not put her own needs above others to the point where it's like hurting other people, but not push her own needs away entirely either. You know, it's a difficult balance, but very rewarding and necessary for happiness you know the and there's a I forget who said it but if you don't love yourself you can't truly love someone else either and if you do not demand respect ever you will never get it I don't know if I love the implication that I mean, I guess, I guess the idea is that she is going to, I don't, I don't get the sense that Billy is going to use it to, to, you know, be really abusive the way Alex did. You know, it is, like, basically, it, it, it works as a metaphor for control of at least your own life, and Billy seems like she does have you know empathy for other people in general you know so i don't think yeah i i don't know if i think it completely works for it to end with her having the crystal and seemingly rejecting yeah i i don't know i'm not entirely sure that I think, you know, if, if you were someone who did think the ending was perfect, you know, yeah, please, in, in the comment section, you know, let me know what it was you thought that, yeah, the, the, um, uh, what's the word? Um, yeah, if, if you thought it was absolutely perfect, right, I did want to briefly, um, let's see, you know, one, one article points out, you know, in the end, Billy is seen looking over the self-portrait of Rose Porter, the portrait shot in black and white and foreboding in itself now has a comparatively milder mood, you know, because Rose has not been hurt by Alex in the, you know, the same way that, uh, yeah. Um, now, that is everything for the, yeah, um, 
Yes. Final section. Notes taken before watching. Same. Yeah, so one person said supporters of LGBTQIA plus filmmaking will be enthused to see not only a new genre story with a central conflict has nothing to do with sexuality issues, the characters are layered and imperfect. And yeah, one person says the female driven castle Haiti setting are refreshing, but does feel the film is ultimately a flawed attempt at a psychological thriller. And let's see. Yeah, one person says it's not a complicated movie by any means, but it's one that it's inspires rich discussion about relationships, abuse, agency, manipulation, and yes, love, or at least a perversion of it. It's more twisted than it is twisty. Let's see. And While the plot is obviously repetitive and the logistics of the magic doesn't entirely make sense, the performances by Maisie Richardson Sellis and Shannon Woodward sell the film, and the nonchalant LGBTQI plus representation is refreshing and welcome. Absolutely. Maisie Richardson Sellis is immensely likable as Billy, giving her character a precise momentum even when she's standing still, she's still moving. Even though she's struggling, she remains strong as she fights to retain her own independence. 90s erotic thrillers commented on that era's convergence of LGBTQIA liberation, women in power, and AIDS. What Jagged Mind says about the present moment is even more intriguing. Story and technique. Oh, right, I already quoted that one. And let's see. The supernatural explanation is filled with thinly sketched horror movie cliches, and it seems to undermine some of the themes about abusive relationships and gaslighting. There is some truth to that. And let's see, Jagged Mind is not a perfect movie, but the idea is unique. We need more movies like this. Every detail in the movie is well crafted. The confusing structure creates a hard to guess story, which is what I wanted. Let's see. And that was something that did I get into? Right, and one person said, uh, um, built on promising ideas revolving around toxic relationships, exploitation of black bodies, and a fading African heritage, Jagged Mind comes up with a reasonably diverting genre, with reasonably diverting genre thrills, stop short, taking advantage of the rich material it has at its fingertips. In getting caught up with its own premise, the film isn't able to craft a compelling enough journey for its protagonist to break free of the cycles she finds herself in. As a result, it becomes something that's fun to watch in the moment, thanks to some playful misleading editing and a song lead performance by Maisie Richard and Sellis, but not something that leaves a lasting impression or makes a full compelling statement. Let's see, and... Director Kelly Kelly's film Jagged Mind is a mix of films like Groundhog Day and Unsane. And the film doesn't shy away from confronting such harrowing subject matter to come across as cheap nor does it feel exploitative for exploitation's sake. Very true. Um, let's And I think those might be about um, right. 
Um, Maisie Richardson Sellis and Shannon Woodward are terrific playing off each other as Billy and Alex. Viewers immediately get their romantic and sexual attraction while still picking up on something profoundly dysfunctional in their relationship, even though it is obscured from the frame of view. The couple shares 90% of their screen time, but Jimmy Jean-Louis still looks quite imposing as a mysterious, mystical figure. And... Yeah, there's one person who doesn't seem to... I'm trying to... I think I talk too much about other people's reviews in these... Responding to other people's reviews in these videos, so... I am gonna... Not that one... And yeah, that is more up. Right, this is a really great. one of the things that people don't tell you about toxic relationships is the impact on the mind and body. Memories become distorted. The stress starts breaking you down mentally and physically. Trying to get out of the relationship can be the tipping point into greater pain, but staying can be more harmful in the long run. In Jagged Mind, we see how forced prolonging of a toxic relationship can wear a person down and the painstaking process of trying to get out before it's too late. And ever since meeting Alex Shannon Woodward by chance in a bar, her blackouts seemingly increase. Billy gets flashes of events she can't recall. They're brutal and intense. Mysterious cuts are showing up on her skin, and mysterious disappearances and long standing friendships begin to crumble over things she doesn't remember. While more erotic thriller than horror, Jagged Mind highlights how inescapable toxic relationships can be. Downing your own memories is common. When coupled with a partner that will do anything to keep you by their side, while disregarding or dismissing the visible harm that they are doing to you, Jagged Mind will feel eerily familiar to some thanks to Alison Morgan's script. Let's yeah. Macy Richardson Sellis as Billy plays the unreliable narrator well, coupled with close-up shots by Raza Partin's lens, we are right there with her in her blackouts, oscillating between confusion and smiles, her desperation to figure out what's going on to her feels natural. Woodward has a more difficult task here due to the nature of Alex through nuances in both script and screenplay, she navigates the emotional complexities of the character without making her an all-out villain. By the film's end, there will be many complicated emotions directed towards Alex. <clears throat> the beauty of Jack Mind is that it is a story that is universal. Universal. While it highlights a much-needed example of LGBTQIA plus intimate partner violence, you don't need to be LGBTQIA plus to see yourself in the situation on screen. The situation between Alex and Billy, though tinged heavily with supernatural elements to elevate the story into the horror realm, is one that has played out before. And let's see. Yeah, that is everything that I had, so, yeah, I've already given a couple of prompts for comments, if none of those fit, let me know, um, do you have any suggestions for things that you felt should have been different about this movie? 
If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. I also do a daily one talking about a Marvel show, which, let's see, I, I guess today and tomorrow are still going to be the 90s animated X-Men show, but... The day after tomorrow, not the Roland Emmerich movie, I will be starting on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'll be working my way through everything that's on Disney Plus that is Marvel TV in, like, recent years. And that isn't animated. I don't think any of them are animated. I do a weekly video talking about a... Star Wars show, which these days is Ahsoka. I do a weekly video talking about the most recent episode I've personally gotten around watching of The Bear. Same thing for Scream Queens. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you're more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching the recording. I will catch you next time. See you next time.